It is Sunday, January 16th, and I'm gonna read some sports books. In this video, I am reading my two most anticipated sports releases for January, and these are Game On, which is an anthology, and Icebreaker by A.L. Grazia Day, which is a gay hockey book. And I'm super excited about this, so let's get into the vlog. Hello, it is Tuesday. I am 20% into Game On. I'm currently on Gloria Chow's story called Mystery Hunt, and I want to update about the first three stories I read. The first story was Let It Spin by Sanachara Portra, and I really enjoyed this one. It was about Spin the Bottle. It is between these two childhood friends, and there is a spin the bottle thing that happens and they stop being friends. And there's also a trigger warning for cancer. I really like that when I started the book, there were content warnings. However, there is not content warnings for every story. And I feel like there should be because the first story is about cancer. I'm not sure if the editor went to every author and asked them if they wanted to provide trigger warnings or not. If you watched my reading vlog of Up All Night, I mentioned that every story needs a trigger warning. So I enjoyed it when I started out the book that I saw three content warnings for different stories or like three stories had different content warnings. So I enjoyed that. But I still stand by that every story should have it. I actually enjoyed this one. It was awesome and I really enjoyed how the story went. Short stories can be hit or miss because you really have to grab attention and you have to have good characters that people are invested in and that's what I love about short stories is when I'm like sucked into one and then it just ends and I'm like oh my god. So out of the stories I've read so far, I would really like to see this as a full book. But the second story I read was Hell Week by Amanda Joy. And I read her in Up All Night. And I hate that she doesn't have a contemporary book out. She writes contemporary really well. I haven't read her other stuff. It looks like she only has like a fantasy series out. It's like a duology. But I really love her stories and her writing. This is about a black bisexual cheerleader and it's set at cheer camp. And we have like some sexual tension. This is about cheer camp. It is about some like hostility going on between two friends who are more than friends. And it's set at cheer camp and it's awesome. I really enjoyed it. I... I just love sports, so I really enjoyed that cheerleading was incorporated. I really like this anthology because there's games and then there's sports, so it's super fun and it's always making me think of what I would write if I were in this anthology. I've always wanted to be in an anthology, it's one of my goals as a writer. That was really good. And now I just finished reading Katie Katugno's story and I realized I have not read from her in a while, but this was honestly my least favorite story, mainly because the story itself feels or just needs to be a book itself. So this one is called The Liberty Homes and it's about like the features of people's houses just disappearing as these kids are playing manhunt during the summer. I love manhunt. I really enjoyed that that was incorporated, but it was just too much and you don't really get a lot of clarity. So it's like really suspicious and mysterious, but you don't really get an outcome. It just kind of ends and it's weird. So that was my least favorite. I'm going into Gloria Chow's book, but I do want to start Icebreaker because today it comes out along with Game On. My pre-order copy is coming in the mail today, so I think I'm just gonna read the physical copy. I'm super excited. I've been thinking about my work in progress lately, and I'm writing a hockey book, or I wrote a hockey book, and I'm just working on revising. So I'm excited for Icebreaker, especially because my hockey team is doing so horrible and it's taking years off my life. <laughs> They're doing really bad, so I'd rather read about a good hockey team than watch mine. Even though I still will because I'm a dedicated fan 
and I just really enjoy hockey. Even if it's bad hockey, I just like having hockey on. <laughs> so that's my update, and I will update you later. Bye. Chapter 1. August. So, being both depressed and anxious at the same time is absolutely wild. You may hear my laptop because I'm about to edit an Instagram picture, but I needed to update because I am loving Icebreaker. I knew I would, but I just love hockey and I just love this book. It is so good and I am obsessed. I'm only on chapter two, but I'm loving it so far. It is an enemies to lovers about two guys who are fighting for the NHL draft position. I'm not sure which pick it is. It might be first round, but they are feuding and I love it. I just love books about hockey. I love hockey and I was smiling while I was listening to the audiobook. I have an advanced audiobook of the book from Nick Gelly and I also have an e-arc which was given to me by the publisher and then I have a physical copy of the book coming because I pre-ordered it. So this is gonna be fun. I feel like this is gonna be a book that I'm consumed in and I love that. I've felt like mediocre about reading lately and I don't know if it's just like the stress of like things going on in my life or me just being like too exhausted to even want to pick up a book. So this I feel like is going to be the book that really gets me back into reading. I'm not, I'm not in a slump, I'm just not in the mood to read. I don't really have the motivation lately and yeah so I'm enjoying it. It's great. I'm gonna edit my picture for the day for Instagram. I am going to be sharing about Game On which I'm currently reading. I haven't read anything else but I wanted to start Icebreaker and I'm in love with it. Hey everybody so that was indeed my fire alarm in my building which that's Second time now it's gone off during an episode of Flood Privilege. Sorry about that. I am only twenty one percent into the book, and I'm obsessed. I am in love. I think this is the best enemies to lovers that I've ever read and I know I'm only 21% in but oh my god I'm obsessed. There was a scene that I just think is genius. I love enemies to lovers because I just love getting the enemies in a room together and just kind of forcing them to talk to each other. If you watch any of my writing content that is the bulk of what the book I'm writing is about. So I'm in love. I think this is just the best enemies to lovers I've ever seen and I'm loving it. Every time I turn on the audiobook I just squeal. Like this is the best thing ever and I love that because I have had such a low energy week. I don't know. I struggle with seasonal depression so like a lot of that has been happening and just this is the one thing to make me super happy and I love it and I don't want it to end. I just think there's a lot of great conversations being held in this book. Shorter players are usually not taken well in the NHL or in hockey in general. They really have to prove themselves because it is stereotypical for a six foot guy to be in the NHL opposed to like someone who is 5'8". And there are a lot of short players like on my team we are very short. The team that I support a lot of them are very short and I love the short kings. As a fellow short king I love that representation. Shorter players are just not given the respect by the media and by their coaching staff. They really have to prove themselves. So in this scenario Mickey has to just be in the weight room more and he's just not seen as the same besides the fact that his dad is a famous hockey player. I just love it. I'm loving it so much. Uh, 
So that's my update. I'm loving it so much. I have not touched game on, but I'm hoping to get back to that as well. The problem is that it's on my iPad and that I have to like wait for it to charge and things like that. And I will say my only little complaint about the NetGalley app is that I can't access it online. So like if I'm on my desktop, I can't listen to it. So I have to rely on my phone, which I hate. I finished Icebreaker last night and I need to talk about it. I have so many feelings and I just loved this book so much. I did rate it a five star because it was an arc. Even though this is a physical copy, I just decided I would give it a five star because it's a debut author and this was incredible. I would say if you enjoyed Check Please, you're going to love this. It is like Check Please in a longer format and it was just everything. It talks about anxiety and depression and I just could relate to it so much. You can definitely tell that a hockey fan wrote this. The hockey is great and I already want to reread this. It was incredible. I I don't even have like I'm speechless because it was just so good. I didn't want to review this and talk about it until I had all of my thoughts together and I just need to gush about this book. It was just so good and it is the perfect hockey book. I will have the trigger warnings down below and probably here on the screen because there are some heavy topics but I just loved this. It was just everything. I really enjoyed the characters. I just think this was the perfect hockey book. I really loved how it talked about mental health because that is like a big thing that actually has been a bigger conversation in the last couple years in the NHL and I just love this so much like I don't really have any other thoughts besides I need everyone to read this it is amazing and I have not physically sat down and wanted to read a book in such a long time and this is the first book to do that. I didn't even eat my dinner yesterday. Like I was going to read and eat my dinner but I couldn't even do that because I was like I need to just focus on this book until I'm finished and it was just fantastic. So if there's one 2022 release you need to be picking up it is Icebreaker. Even if you don't like sports books I still recommend this because it has such a great conversation and it is great and that's all. I will come back if I have anything else. I can't even put into words how much I enjoyed this because I just want to reread it again. Like that's it. I just want to reread it. It's great. It is the perfect hockey book and I am obsessed with it. You're going to be hearing me talk about this till the end of time and I am just so glad that I read it. Also, can we just talk about this? I unraveled the book and I saw that two skates were embossed and that is everything. I just loved this book so much. Now I am going to finish up the game on and I will be back later but I just wanted to say I need everybody to read this book. It is so amazing and I will be rereading it. Like this is a book that I could reread probably five times during the year because it's also like a quick read and the characters are just great. There's so many great dynamics. There's family, like a big family. And it is humorous, it is heart-wrenching, and it is just everything. Hello, it is Sunday, February 6th, and I am 41% into Game On. If you've ever wondered how long it takes me to read a 400-page book, now you know that it takes me a long time. <laughs> This anthology is 448 pages. I'm 41% in. Since I have updated last, I've read three more stories, so I'm going to review them here. The first story was Mystery Hunt by Gloria Chow. I really enjoyed this. However, it wasn't that engaging at times. It was a little slow, but the bulk of the story is about two Asian teens who 
are in this hunt at a college that they want to get into and it is a scavenger hunt and it is all based on language and linguistics. There is Mandarin incorporated, there's Latin, and it was just such a cool concept. And we also just get to see them drinking boba. We got to see them kind of grow to appreciate each other and a little romance blooming. And it was really fun. I really thought it was a great twist to this theme and just getting to see people in a scavenger hunt. I love scavenger hunts. I've done a couple on my channel already where I had booktubers control my day and that was a scavenger hunt like video. And then I also did a bookshelf scavenger hunt. So those videos will be linked down below, but it was fun because these characters are in a team and whoever wins, wins a scholarship to the college. So we get to see them going to each spot and decoding the riddle and then going to the next spot and just actually doing a scavenger hunt. And it was really fun, but it was a little slow at times. So I was taken out of the story a little bit, but Nonetheless, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really cool way to incorporate this theme and I had a lot of fun. Next was She Could Be a Farmer by Nina Marino. I didn't know she was in this anthology, I forgot. So it was a nice surprise to see her. I really enjoy her. This follows Camila. She is a bisexual Cuban American girl and this game that she used to play, it's a farming simulator. I would say it was a little bit like Stardew Valley, but I saw some reviews that were saying it was like a sapphic Animal Crossing story, so I'm guessing that it could also be Animal Crossing. I saw towards the end some more comparisons to Animal Crossing, but I thought originally because it said it was a farming simulator that it was more so Stardew Valley. So if you like Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley, I think you'll really like this story. Um, Camilla is a hopeless romantic and she's a gamer and they're, she hasn't played this game for years and she's watching a streamer and they announced that there's going to be an update and she's updating the game. It was so fun to read as a fellow gamer. I really enjoyed it. And it's also a sapphic story. It's kind of like a childhood friends to lovers situation. Um, Camila and this girl Lily have been friends forever. They're childhood friends and they had a fight and stopped talking to each other. And then something happens that I won't say because I don't want to spoil, but I really enjoyed that story. And last, I recently read one of the good ones by Isaac Simons. This is about a boy named Logan. He's black and he is at a party one night and his brother, who is white, picks him up from the party and tells him he can't be there because the cops are going to show up. And this is all while Logan is with a boy named Ezra, who he just met at the party and they're about to hook up. So he's pulled from the party and then something happens where the cops come and then he finds out that it was Ezra. So what I really like is that there are content warnings at the beginning of the book. I don't want to show it much because it's an arc, but I really appreciate that the story starts with content warnings. So it says depictions of racism, police brutality, and parental death. So there is a lot. It's a heavy story, but I really think it was an important one, especially because there is a lot of racism in football. There is a protest aspect and I enjoyed seeing that aspect of football. It was good. I love Isaac, so I knew I was going to love this. This is the one that actually had me hooked the most. I like sat and I read it all in one sitting. So I'm going to go read the rest of the anthology. I'm kind of hoping I can get some done today, but it is super long. So I know I'm not going to be able to finish it in one sitting, but I would like to get more into it today. So that is it for now. I will see you later. It's been a while. I think the last time I talked to you was in February and it is now April and my plans for the weekend are to finish up this collection. So here's what happened. I had some struggles with the e-copy that I was sent 
just the formatting was weird and I also could read it through the NetGalley app which I was doing but then it expired and sometimes it's hard for me to keep up with ebooks so I ran over to my library and I picked up a physical copy and I'm here to share with you the last couple of stories that I've read. I think the last time I updated you I read the Isaac Fitzsimons story and so I have some notes that I'm going to share with you. So since we last talked, I read Just Tell Them You Play Soccer, The Girl with the Teeth, and just a couple minutes ago I finished up Game of the Gods by Francesca Zappia, and there's also a story I skipped. Sean David Hutchinson is in this collection. I skipped over his story because I do not support him as an author. He has been racist to black authors in the past and he was very rude to a sensitivity reader who was reading for Ace Rep. And so since that, I do not support him as an author. I've only read one of his books, so it's not really a huge hit for me, but I thought that I would explain it. It is my personal choice not to read him, so I just wanted to point that out to talk about why I skipped his story, but let's talk about the stories that I did read. Starting off with the seventh story, Just Tell Them You Play Soccer by Anna Mariano. This is about a Quidditch team. It is about a girl who is living at college and her and her roommate don't really know each other that well. She's told her roommate that she plays soccer because she's insecure about Quidditch and she knows she's going to get made fun of and that does happen. And then there's a sapphic romance and that's all I'm really going to say about that one. I know she has a novel about a Quidditch team and one of the characters in this short story is actually in that book. So I'm wondering where this story kind of falls into place. I'm not really sure, but I will say that she mentions that she denounces the author who created this sport, but I still think that cis people don't understand that when you still talk about the author, that is showing that it's nothing that you feel triggered by. Just the mention of Quidditch did trigger me a little bit, and so I just want to point that out that totally skip that story if you're trans and just in general if this author has affected you in some way because uh it's just kind of annoying that cis people write about it because like even though you're like denouncing the author you're still promoting a thing that she created like I know that people think that they're being an ally that way but you're really not because a trans person can still read that and be triggered by it. So I just wanted to point that out for any trans people looking to read this book and just to anybody that has been affected by the author and her bigotry. So just wanted to point that out. But in terms of the story, it was a little bit slow. I'm going to point out I am reading a YA anthology, obviously, but it just felt weird because it starts off with this girl telling her roommates that she actually doesn't play soccer, she plays Quidditch, and like all of the characters got mad at her for lying about it and it just kind of felt weird because I'm like okay well I don't really think that that's something that I would be really mad about because they were really mad but I get it like if you've known someone for a while and they've been lying about this, I think you could just have a better conversation. These are supposed to be young characters, so I totally get it. I really like the setting because a lot of colleges do have Quidditch teams, so it was actually cool to see how a practice goes down, so that's kind of the setting that we have here. There's bi rep and anxiety rep, which was really cool, but overall I just felt eh. like, you know, I don't know. Do was Did we need this? Did we need it? I don't know. I didn't need it personally. <laughs> the next story was The Girl with the Teeth by Kayla Whaley. If you saw my video where I read the Up All Night anthology, Kayla Whaley was in this and I loved her story. So I was really happy to see her again and this was so immersive and cool. Content warnings for self-harm, biting blood, and depersonalization. So Based off those content warnings, this is basically about depersonalization and oh my god, it's 
so amazing because it is written as the protagonist Sunny thinks that she is in a video game and it is so oh my god it was such a beautifully written story. These are my favorite parts of anthologies because you see all of these really creative stories that you may not have thought of before. I am a gamer. I love game related stories so obviously I'm loving this anthology but I thought that this was a genius one. It's probably my favorite out of this whole anthology besides maybe the scavenger hunt one and Isaac Fitzsimons. I really liked his as well but this one was fantastic. I really liked it. And then I just recently read Francesca Zappia's and hers was Game of the Gods and some of the stories I'm finding kind of confusing at parts because I think some of it you have to know the sport. So this was football. That's one sport I just cannot understand. <laughs> I could watch it a million times and still not understand it, yet I can watch hockey, which is a very complex sport to watch. <laughs> make it make sense. <laughs> anyway, this was interesting. It was about the Favor Squad, which I've never heard of before. I don't know if it's fictional or not. I'm gonna look it up later. So this is about a girl whose younger sister is on the football team and she is the manager of the Favor Squad. They're kind of like cheerleaders and it's their job to like hype up the crowd and stuff to build momentum and she is having a little crisis because she wishes she could play like her sister but she feels like she doesn't have as much value and importance as her sister does. Francesca Zappia is really good at hiding a message in her stories and really bringing it to a head and I thought it was really good but I was confused for like the first half of it because I was like what the hell is this? I have no idea what's going on and I really thought she wrote football very well. That's another aspect of writing sports that is really hard. It's really hard to write sports and she did a good job with it. I was able to kind of follow it because my thing is I like to visualize what's going on so if the author can show me a football scene and I can actually envision the characters running down the field and scoring a touchdown that is really good execution in my book and those are the last three that I read. I'm gonna read some more of them today. I am on the last story of Game On. You don't know how happy I am that I am finally completing this. It's gonna make me feel so good. So I'm going to finish it up now and then I will return with my full review. I finished Game On. I am so happy that I finally completed this. I'm going to review it as a whole but first let's talk about the rest of the stories that I read. When we talked last I told you about Francesca Zappia's story and since then I have read Do You See It Now by Laura Silverman this was about a game night of friends and it is about this girl who is at a comic book store with her boyfriend. There's some sexism that goes on and she's just kind of learning that she doesn't really like her boyfriend's misogyny and sexism. So something happens and I thought this was a really interesting way to frame games. I'm like oh my god a game night is so fun to write. This is just such a fun prompt in general but I'm just loving how everyone has taken this and I just want to have another anthology of this. Like if we could just have another one I would really appreciate it and love it because I know this was 15 stories but I want more. So I actually really enjoyed this. As always in Laura Silverman's work there's always Jewish rep because she's Jewish and overall I really liked this. I thought it had a good message. A lot of these stories were really hard to read because there was a lot of heavy content and I will talk about that when I talk about the book as a whole but I really had to put this down at a few times because I can't read heavy shit all the time. Uh, so that was hard for me. Then I read Plum Girls by Kathleen Glasgow and I really enjoyed her story in the Up All Night anthology and I actually had to grab it because I thought that this was the same characters because it felt a little bit similar. So this was about a girl whose best friend 
is murdered and she's like framed for the murder and then her and her ex-friends all show up with notes to this house and it says they would win ten thousand dollars if they stay and then they can become a plum girl and I thought this was just rushed um it reminded me a lot of this book I read back in the day and it was Panic by Lauren Oliver I thought that was a really fun game element story and it reminded me of that because this is just girls sitting in this house and seeing how long they can survive in like this abandoned house and it was a little bit boring at times it was really heavy to read about a murder like this was a little bit graphic and we just kind of had people like pinning themselves against each other and she talks about going to a hospital and I really actually liked the ending and how it wrapped up but the game element just didn't feel like it was there besides the fact that it was mentioned there wasn't like a game you know like I would have thought that we would have saw all of these girls sitting in this house being like oh I can't sit here anymore so for me personally the story was just meh it wasn't really great but I did appreciate some of the elements of it for this story there are trigger warnings for death alcoholism and violence. Then I read World of Wonder by Kimberly Jones and Jilly Siegel. I have not read those authors before but I've been wanting to pick up their work. This was set at an amusement park called World of Wonder and there's a competition. The staff divide between Team Retro and Team Digital because there is an inclusion of a VR game. Some staff members believe in Team Digital and think Digital is the way to save the park whereas Team Retro believes that Retro is the way to go. And I just really like this. It just reminded me of being back at carnivals and stuff like that. There's queer rep. The main character Ursula, her dads Greg and David actually are founders of the park and so there's also some inclusion of just being seniors and like having a summer together where your friends are going off because Ursula is staying at the park and her friend Renee is going off to school. So there's some friendship turmoil as well but it was just really fun. What a fun setting. And then we have Weeping Angels by Yamil Saeed Mendez. I really love her. She's a really good writer and I just love her work. And this was really interesting but let me talk about the content warnings first because it says drowning but no there's way more than that. There's death, drowning, grief, mention of marijuana, mention of, of drugs, and a panic attack. This was my favorite. I really loved this one. Any book about grief or anything about grief I'm going to enjoy but I really love how this was written. So I'm not a Doctor Who fan but this is inspired by the Doctor Who game and I will read it to you if you're not a fan of Doctor Who and you don't know what I'm talking about. There's a game called Weeping Angels. It says, Weeping Angels was a game they had inherited from the older kids in the neighborhood. It was a form of tag inspired by Doctor Who. Ellie had never seen the show but she knew by now Weeping Angels were possessed structures that came closer to you when you weren't looking. In their game one of them would play the angel going after all the other players and when you got tagged by an angel you became one too. This was really interesting and fun. This is all about grief and our main character Ellie is grieving the death of her friend Colin who would set up these games of weeping angels and she hasn't talked to her friends in a while and it is just all about her grief. What I loved about this is that the author really gets you to feel for Ellie and know about Colin because he's dead. We don't know anything about him but as Ellie's telling the reader about him I felt like oh my god what a cool guy he is and then you're like feeling for her because you're like oh he's such a cool guy but he died and I just thought that it was so well done. Oh my god I loved this so much. Oh it was so good. Then we end the anthology with Night Falls by Kika Hatsapolo. She is writing her first novel so this was like the first time I'm actually reading from her so she's writing a mystery and so that's gonna be exciting. I'll definitely have to check it out but this was... I didn't even say what this was about. Oh this was so cool. It was a mafia party 
And this just took me back to my college days when I was in community college. I had a group of friends. We would go on these retreats during spring break and we played Mafia. I played Mafia for the first time and it was so fun. We used to play it all the time. And so this was a Mafia party and we had a girl who is bisexual but she is not very out to people but she's at this mafia party with a girl on a date and it's her ex-boyfriend's party but there's no ill will. She's actually friends with him. It was just a relationship that didn't really work out. There was no chemistry and they still remain friends and it was just so fun to read a whole mafia game of characters you don't know so you're kind of making up in your head who you think it's going to be and I would love to have this kind of scene or even just like a whole book of like a party and you have mafia included because it is such a fun game and just reading it through fictional characters eyes is really cool and it just took me back to the days where we would play mafia like so much <laughs> and that's it that was the anthology i really enjoyed it i don't even have any stories that i absolutely hated so if i were to give it a rating i would give it a four out of five stars i loved this so much but i need to talk about the trigger warnings because I said this when I read Up All Night and I really would have liked to have trigger warnings in that. I was grateful that we did have some stories that had trigger warnings but I was still confused why not every story had them and there wasn't as many. Like I listed more than the book actually did. The only trigger warning listed for Weeping Angels was drowning. Now I'm not sure if that was just to imply that there was death and grief but I just still think that it needs to be included and I just thought that all of them should have had trigger warnings or more trigger warnings and at the end of the book with the acknowledgments I really enjoyed that we get a little snippet from each author saying what their favorite sport or game is and I have to read Jilly Siegel's work now because she is a hockey fan her team is is the Tampa Bay Lightning. Steven Stamkos is one of my favorite players so I have to read her now. I think that that is just the key to my heart and it is the way I'm going to pick up a book. I love anthologies and if you do as well you can go and watch my video where I read Up All Night. I read it throughout a week of nights and it was really fun but that is it for the video. Thank you so much if you stayed till the end because I have been working on this video for so long and I am just so relieved that I finally finished it because these were my most anticipated releases. Everything for the books will be down below and I want to know what your favorite game is. A video game, a board game, sports, whatever. Let's talk in the comments. If you would like more sports book recommendations feel free to hit subscribe and turn on my post notifications so you don't miss a video. If you would like more bookish things from me you can follow me on Instagram at Pucks and Paperbacks and I have my own podcast Reader Rambles. It is a weekly podcast for book lovers where I ramble about bookish topics and I help readers navigate life. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.